Hello television viewers, I'm Nick. Over the last week I was reading your comments on my last toy video trying to get a sense of which toys you all love the most because those are the ones that I get the most joy out of making fun of. I came across this suggestion from Queasy the Kitty Fox Lover asking me to take a look at the Furby Connect commercial. Whether or not you remember, when Furby was first released in 1998 the world collectively sh themselves over it. This was basically the toy industry's first attempt at a domesticated robot. We were told Furbies could speak to one another and even learn to speak English over time. Almost exactly like this year's Hatchimals, the holiday demand for Furbies was insane. They retailed for around 30 bucks, but they resold for up to $300 on eBay. But somehow my grandparents managed to get a Furby for me and each of my sisters, and boy were they terrible. Furby was obnoxious, boring, and it would never shut up or go to sleep when when you wanted it to. A seven-year-old child should not have to know what it feels like to try to smother the life out of something with a pillow. That's a big kid privilege. Speaking of big kids, Furby turns 18 this year, which means it's finally old enough for Anthony Weiner to stop sending it dirty text messages and no longer too young for Donald Trump to start sending it dirty text messages. Nonpartisan pervert humor. Furby is now Furby Connect, so let's see what new tricks it's picked up during the global war on terrorism. It's Furby Connect. Now, Furby gets updates from the app and reacts to new content, like funny videos. <laughs> Wash behind the whiskers. <laughs> games, songs, and more. I'm only one call away. I know that song. And with regularly changing content, what will Furby do next? Ask a parent to download the app, sleep mask included. Oh great, can I get one of those sleep masks for my old Furby? Because I'm pretty sure it's still tied to a cinder block squawking away on the ocean floor somewhere. In the age of app-connected toys, Furby is no longer limited to a pre-recorded library of stupid things to say. It now gets updated with new stupid things to say from the internet, the same way I am when I only read the headlines of popular news articles on Facebook. Of course, Furby Connect isn't the only intelligent toy on the market. There's a huge trend towards robots that teach kids basic programming and coding skills, like Dash. Giving one of these to your kids will bestow you with the power of judging other people's parenting. Jill, people think you're a tiger mom. <laughs> That's preposterous. Oh, Linus just finished Brahms. By this time next month, he'll be well into Rachmaninoff. I think he'd like Dash. It makes learning fun. Learning and fun don't normally go together now, do they? Coding is the skill of the future. With Dash the Robot, kids learn to code as they play. Mom! That looks awesome! Back to Bach, honey. Or no kale puffs. Find Dash at dashtherobot.com. Apparently teaching your child advanced music skills warrants a pretty smug attitude from someone wearing a belted denim shirt dress. The creators of Dash were so focused on making Joan, the so-called tiger mom, seem uptight that they completely neglected to teach this lady how to deliver lines, stand in place, or gesture at an object like a normal person. In the close-up, they also forgot to remove this piece of masking tape, which told mom number one where to put her elbow. This ad teaches me nothing about the toy's features, and its humor tries to be so fresh out of film school edgy that the most relatable character in it is the blue plastic cup. But is it possible that there are app-connected toys that will improve your child's behavior? in ways that you never even thought necessary? I have a magic toothbrush. It beats up all the monsters in my mouth. Grush helps my son build good brushing habits by guiding him to reach all four quadrants of the mouth. When he brushes, I'll know immediately. The app helps me know how well he's done each day. No more battles over brushing. Now he's grushing. Brush with Grush. When I got my child their expensive smartphones and tablets, I was disappointed because they didn't have enough opportunities to knock them into a sink of running water or fling them into an open toilet. Thanks, Grush. If you're really so concerned about your child's rotting mouth quadrants, then the most economical thing to do is wait for the situation to get so bad that they need their first root canal. If that doesn't teach your little cavity monster to clean out their face hole, then evolution has failed them. And so have you. Oh, and in case you're wondering, there's a French company that makes an app-connected spoon designed to help make eating more fun for your toddler. How? By doing this. Whoa, so cool. What the f*** is that? In case that wasn't clear, maybe this poorly translated website will help. It is challenging for a baby to concentrate the whole meal long on its plate. Even the beloved nanny, daddy, or mummy won't change much to the equation. Good and friendly. Company understands me that finally does. With toys like this, it's impossible not to raise children who treat everyday chores like normal, well-adjusted people. I'll crush you! 
What app connected toys are you hoping will improve your life? Let me know in the comments and keep those suggestions coming to maybe see yours featured in next week's video. Give this video a thumbs up if you like my toy commercial commentaries, and don't forget to click that subscribe button, which is my picture right here, or that button down below, so that you're the first to see new videos from me every week with a new toy video each Friday. Thanks so much for watching. You guys are hilarious and awesome. I'll see you next time.